The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us here at 5 a.m. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. We begin now with your 17 Court Watch. It was a courtroom do-over yesterday. A man accused in a deadly stabbing who lost control in the courtroom before being carried out earlier this week stood before a judge again. Joseph Neve was arrested Sunday night. Bakersfield police say he stabbed a man on 25th Street earlier that day, killing him. On Tuesday, Neve was supposed to enter a plea on charges of first degree murder, but he was pulled from the courtroom after uh, before that could happen. Yesterday, he entered a plea of not guilty. Four men arrested in a big human trafficking sting pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. The California Department of Justice dubbed the sting Operation Bad Barbie. 23 suspected child traffickers were arrested in that sting. You can read much more about the arrests and the suspects on our website, KGET.com. 17 Crime Watch now. A restaurant owner has seen the worst and the best of Bakersfield this week. A burglary, followed by an outpouring of support from the community. What makes this story special is owner Jim Reed's remarkable empathy toward the thieves. 17 Storyteller Robert Price explains. One might justifiably feel any from a range of emotions after having one's business, one's livelihood attacked. Frustration, anger, sadness, resolve. Any or all of those responses would be understandable. Jim Reed's reaction was a bit out of the ordinary. The owner of Cubby's Chicago-style pizza in southwest Bakersfield responded to a pre-dawn burglary Tuesday morning with a combination of defiance and empathy for the perpetrators of this, a shattered door. Burglary and vandalism of this nature are all too common in downtown Bakersfield, but the city's outer neighborhoods are not exempt, as Reed learned again. What makes his case remarkable is how, as he expressed in a 2 a.m. Facebook post, he refuses to allow the crime to shake his faith in people. Groceries are so expensive. Things are expensive. You can't fault people for wanting to live, you know, and eat. I'll tell you, though, I mean, if they walked in and said, Hey, I got no money for pizza. I'm, I'm your man. I, I would take care of those people. I definitely would. Where does empathy like that spring from? From Reed's own experience. He says he grew up dirt poor, raised by a single mother, hungry, but determined. His empathy was rewarded by the parade of people inspired to make his business whole again and inspired by his uncommon grasp of life's challenges. Man, overwhelming response. And, and my, my regular customers have co all come in. And uh, yesterday, uh, this business was enough to pay for that window. And to me, I was like, well, thank God for that. You know, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. The would-be thieves who came in with a dolly tried to steal this entire change machine, but it's bolted to the floor. They popped open a cash register drawer an empty cash register drawer and left with nothing. Nothing except Jim Reed's astounding, selfless gift of goodwill. Of course, there's no way to know if Jim Reed's expression of grace had any impact on the perpetrators, but it did have an impact on his customers. At Cubby's Chicago Pizza, Robert Price, 17 News. Making headlines around the nation this morning. The White House says President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden will travel to Hawaii on Monday to get a first-hand look at the fire damage on Maui. The President and First Lady plan to meet with state and local officials as well as resp first responders and survivors on their visit to Lahaina. They will also tour some of the areas impacted by the historic wildfires that swept across portions of the island, killing at least 111 people. The president says he has been in close contact with Hawaii Governor Josh Green and has assured him that the federal assistance will be provided to those affected. Here locally, Raising Canes is holding a fundraiser today for a shelter in Lahaina. All day, Raising Canes will donate 15% of its profits to a homeless resource center on the island. And there are several other ways to help the survivors of those wildfires from right here in Kern County. Houghton Community Blood Bank is asking for platelet and plasma donations to help burn victims. And the American Red Cross is encouraging everyone to volunteer or donate financially. 
If you would like to support the Maui relief efforts, you can go to our website, kget.com, and click on the link at the top of the homepage for trustworthy fundraising sources. You know, we talk about all of the ways that you can help, and, you know, yes, they, are, they have volunteers, uh, like the American Red Cross, for example. A lot of their volunteers have already made their way to Lahaina to assist those in need. And we have a follow up on a bill proposed by Bakersfield State Senator Shannon Grove to classify child sex trafficking as a serious felony in California. Since it was first introduced, SB 14 was killed only to be brought back to life after intense backlash. And yesterday it finally went before the Assembly Appropriations Committee in Sacramento. However, it could still be a few weeks until members decide how and if to move forward with the bill. Opponents have concerns that it could lead to victims who may have been forced to cooperate with their traffickers to also end up behind bars. But Grove says she does not believe the bill needs any amendments and that she doesn't think that could happen. The committee is expected to formally decide whether to kill the bill or allow it to move forward on September 1st. 17 News is your local election headquarters and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is endorsing Bakersfield Democrat Rudy Salas in the race for the 22nd Congressional District. Salas is aiming to oust Hanford Republican David Valadeo after losing to him by three percentage points last year. Democratic State Senator Melissa Hurtado is also running for this seat. Pelosi released a statement reading in part, Salas is a proven champion for women, workers, and delivering for Valley families and I'm proud to endorse him. Salas is expected is exactly the right candidate to get the job done, according to Pelosi." End quote. Well, dozens of state employees protested at the Legislative Office building in Sacramento, and their demonstration even led to some arrests. You're looking at the lobby and main staircase inside the Legislative Office building, commonly referred to as the swing space. The state employees want higher wages and what they call a better contract. Some of them who took part in the demonstration blocked the entrance and security area for a time. That's when CHP arrested eight members of the group, including two Sacramento City Council members. Demonstrators say it's all to send a message to the governor. In April, we put forward what we thought was a fair proposed economic proposal. The state responded with a 6% low ball over three years, a 6% raise over three years, even after, you know, the pandemic, the sacrifices the state workers made, uh, the inflation that we've been experiencing across the state and the country, um, and that's unacceptable. Governor Newsom briefly addressed the contract negotiations earlier this week, saying he hopes to reach a deal soon, but he added he could not say much more than that, uh, citing ongoing negotiations. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.